All right, folks, Logan Alec here. So about three, let's call it four months ago, I published my review of the Acorns Investing Platform. This was an in-depth review and walkthrough. In that video, I shared with you my thoughts on basically every aspect of the Acorns app for good and for bad. And then earlier this month, I did the same thing for the Stash Investing app. Full review and walkthrough, pros and cons, the whole shebang. Links to both of these reviews are in the description below, along with my affiliate links to both Stash and Acorns. If you use my links in the description below to download these apps, you will receive a bonus. I will receive a bonus after you make your first qualifying deposit. But hey, don't do that yet. Don't do that until you finish this video because this video has a lot of important information in it. In this video, I'm going to be comparing Acorns versus Stash, okay? I'm gonna compare the features and then at the end, I'm gonna say, hey, Acorns is probably best for this kind of person. Stash is probably best for that kind of person. It can be confusing, right? Because both Acorns and Stash are kind of oriented toward the beginner investor market. So they have kind of similar target markets, right? They both have similar features, a roundup feature, for instance. But there are some pretty significant differences between them that I think are worth talking about. Because if you're going down this route of using one of these apps, and as I talked about you know, in their respective reviews, uh, there is certainly a kind of person these apps are good for and there's a certain kind of person these apps aren't so great for, right? But basically, if you're looking for an easy way to get started investing, and you don't wanna invest a lot of time in learning the ins and outs of investing, these apps do the trick. They get you started investing. Are they the best way to buy stocks for a more sophisticated investor? No, not by a long shot, right? But hey, I'd rather you, you use an app like Acorns or an app like Stash than not invest at all, right? Because let's say you're not interested in learning the ins and outs of investing, right? You don't want to learn how to set up your pies and M1 finance and all the stuff I'm into, right? That's okay, right? But if you do want to learn more about investing, go a little more in depth, consider taking my Prosper course. This is a comprehensive course in personal finance where I basically share everything I wish everybody knew about money. There's a link in the description below with a coupon code to that course. But if you do want to use one of these kinds of apps, Acorns, Stash, you need to pick one because both of them charge you a monthly fee. And there's no point in paying two monthly fees for apps that at a very high level are kind of serving the same purpose to get you to start investing. I'm not going to get into whether using Acorns or Stash at all and paying the monthly fee at all is worth it in this comparison video. I talked about that a lot in great detail in both my Acorns review and my Stash review. Check out those reviews if you haven't seen them yet. But if you do conclude that these apps are for you, that one of these apps are for you, you need to pick one, go with it, stick with it, right? Hopefully by the end of this video, you will know which one is right for you. And if you figure that out, I would love it if you use my links in the description below to get started. All right, let's get into the comparison. I'm going to get into the features uh, in a bit, but let's start with the fees. Both Acorns and Stash have three different plans. A basic plan, a mid-tier plan, and a premium plan. The basic plan for both Acorns and Stash is a dollar a month currently. The mid-tier plan for both is three dollars a month, and each one has a premium plan as well. Acorns premium plan costs five dollars a month. Stash's costs nine dollars a month. And if you've watched my Acorns and Stash reviews, uh, you know that my belief is if you just want to try these services out, you're probably better served by just starting with the one dollar a month plan. Seeing if the app is right for you, is it actually motivating you to invest? Because that's the goal, right? And if it's doing that, maybe consider the uh, mid-tier plan. I'm not a fan of the highest tier pricing plans, especially stashes at $9 a month. I frankly find that overpriced. But now that we've got the fee structures out of the way, let's pull up this table here that compares the features of Acorns at various subscription tiers versus the features of Stash at various subscription tiers. We're gonna go feature by feature from here on out. I'm going to describe and compare each feature between Acorns and Stash, and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you the kind of person who, in my belief, maybe Acorns is a better fit, as well as the kind of person for whom Stash might be the better, uh, better bet, because look, Everybody's looking for different things with these apps, right? I can't say definitively that Acorns is the superior one or Stash is superior. It's really important for you to follow along with me here in this video, in this comparison, because I might say something that's a complete deal breaker for you, right? And that makes your decision easy. For example, as I'll talk about later in this video, you can't buy individual stocks in Acorns. You just can't, it doesn't have that functionality, but you can do that in Stash. So if it's super important to you that you can buy individual stocks, maybe Stash is the way to go. On the other hand, if all you want to do is set it and forget it investing, and I'll talk about this later in the video, you can get that with the Acorns dollar a month plan, but you'd have to upgrade to Stash's $3 a month plan to get that. So listen closely, pay attention, so you know which of these two investing apps is best for you. Let's start with the most basic feature here. 
the taxable brokerage account. They both have this. What is this? A taxable brokerage account is just a fancy word for an investment account, normal old investment account. And it's taxable because unlike an IRA, a normal old taxable brokerage account doesn't give you any tax advantages. When you buy stocks in it, dividends from those stocks, right? They pay, if they pay dividends, uh, they're taxed, right? You sell stocks, you're taxed on the gain. So these uh, are a taxable brokerage account is offered in both the $1 a month plan uh, for both Stash and Acorns, but there's a big difference. With Acorns, you can only invest in the portfolio that, that was assigned to you from Acorns based on your answers to questions that Acorns asked you uh, or if you chose the portfolio you selected. Acorns has five preset portfolios, okay? Conservative, moderately conservative, moderate, moderately aggressive, and aggressive. Basically, the more conservative the portfolio, the higher the allocation to bonds rather than stocks, and the more aggressive the portfolio, the higher the allocation to stocks rather than bonds. If you want more details on the Acorns portfolios, be sure to check out my Acorns review where I go through each of them and show you the funds that are in each one. Like I've mentioned, link to my Acorns review is in the description below. So those are your only investing options in Acorns. One of these five portfolios, you cannot change your fund allocation in Acorns. I mean, you can change it to one of the other portfolios, but you can't change the funds in the portfolio. You cannot buy individual stocks or ETFs in Acorns. You are restricted in one of those five portfolios. Those are, that's the only investing options you get. However, with Stash, you can invest in specific stocks or ETFs of your own choosing. However, to complicate matters a bit, you cannot invest in the entire universe of stocks or ETFs that you could possibly buy at a traditional brokerage like Fidelity, where most of my stocks are, or uh, a Vanguard or Schwab. With Stash, your selection of stocks and ETFs is limited to whatever's in the Stash platform. So right now on Stash's website, it shows that there are over 3,000 stocks that you can buy on the platform. Most major headline-making companies are there, right? But with ETFs, there are only 90-some ETFs available to purchase on Stash. However, if you just want to stash, pardon the pun, stash away some money in a very basic low-cost index fund ETF, like a total U.S. stock market index fund ETF, like BTI, that's the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF, uh, you can buy it in Stash. Or if you just want to invest in an S&P 500 index fund ETF, Stash doesn't offer the Vanguard version, VOO, but it does have the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF, ticker symbol IVV, which has a low expense ratio of 0.03% as well. In fact, in my Stash review, you saw me purchase uh, this ETF while I was doing my review. Also, as I mentioned in my Stash review, you can buy whatever stock or ETF is on the Stash platform using fractional shares, meaning that though that even the, the price of VTI, the Vanguard Total Stock Market ETF, is over $200 right now, even if you only have a dollar in your account, you can put it into VTI or any other stock or ETF on the Stash platform, regardless of the actual price of a share of that stock or ETF. Now, obviously the ability to buy individual stocks and ETFs on Stash is something of an advantage over Acorns, but is that really the right thing for you to do? Because look, if all you wanna do is set and forget your investments in a single ETF or a few ETFs, and your investing strategy is that simple, you can do that without paying a monthly subscription fee at Vanguard or Fidelity or Schwab, right? Or if you want to get a bit fancier with your automation and customization at M1 Finance. And if you really want to get into the individual stocks game, there are better platforms for that as well. So yes, Stash does give you the ability to buy individual stocks and ETFs, albeit in a limited capacity. But is that really what you should be using Stash for? In my mind, Stash and Acorns are for investors who just want to get started investing. And that brings me to the next comparison item, which is RoboAdvisor. A RoboAdvisor is basically an algorithm that allocates your investment portfolio based on what it knows about you. Specifically, your age, your risk tolerance, how soon you need the money in your account, etc. Right? Because if you need to take the money out of your investment account, let's say you don't need the money for 30 years for your retirement. You can be more aggressive, right? But if you need to tap into it in five years, you have to be more conservative. So RoboAdvisor takes all the information it knows about you, which you provide to it through answering questions in the app or the platform or whatever it is, and the RoboAdvisor comes out with a portfolio for you. For example, if you see my Acorns review, you know that Acorns assigned me, based on information I provide to Acorns, it assigned me the aggressive portfolio, which is 55% large-sized company stocks, 10% medium-sized company stocks, 5% small-sized company stocks, and 30% international stocks. And like I said previously, Acorns has four other other portfolios that it could assign to you 
and Acorn Tree balances your portfolio quarterly, and they say whenever the percentage holding of one or more ETFs fluctuates 5% above or below its target allocation, Acorns will sell overrepresented ETFs and use the proceeds to buy underrepresented ETFs to bring your portfolio towards target allocation. So for example, let's say the value of my portfolio becomes 65% large sized company stocks, 10% medium sized company stocks, 5% small sized company stocks, and 20% international stocks. Then what Acorns will do is sell some of the large sized company stock ETFs and use the proceeds to purchase more of the international stocks ETF. Okay, to bring my allocation back to the target allocation of 55% large cap, 10% mid cap, 5% small cap, and 30% international. And yes, this does create a taxable event when Acorn sells the overrepresented fund, but it does keep your portfolio in line with the allocation that Acorns thinks is best for you based on its robo advising algorithm. And you get this all in all Acorns account, even Acorns Lite, which is their dollar a month subscription, right? That's what we're talking about right now. And I view this as the main reason why someone might want to use an app like Acorns or Stash in the first place, right? Just for the app to do all the investing work for them, okay? There's no guarantee that by using a robo-advisor like Acorns or any other that you will beat the market with it. But allocation based on your portfolio combined with periodic rebalancing is what would be recommended by most human financial advisors as well. So you get this robo-advising feature with the basic Acorns plan, the dollar a month Acorns light plan. However, you do not get access to robo-advising with Stash's dollar a month plan, Stash Beginner. You have to upgrade to the Stash growth plan which is $3 a month to access Stash's new smart portfolios. They just recently launched this. This is Stash's first uh, foray into robo-advising. And of course, if you use the Stash smart portfolios, your portfolio will be rebalanced on a quarterly basis as well, similar to Acorns. Frankly, if it were me and I just want to get started investing, set it and forget it, I'd probably just go with Acorns in this case because you can get that robo-advising feature for only a dollar a month while you'd have to upgrade to Stash growth for $3 a month to get that with Stash. All right, now let's talk about the Roundup feature. I believe that Acorns was the first app and investing platform to kind of innovate this concept of investing Roundups. Uh, and what, what this is, it's basically, if you make a purchase on a linked bank account or credit card or debit card, right, that you've linked to Acorns, Acorns will round up your purchases to the nearest dollar and invest that difference into your Acorn account. For example, let's say you buy a cup of coffee that costs $4.53 after taxes. Acorns will round up your purchase by 47 cents to $5 and will invest that 47 cent difference into your Acorns account. Uh, with Acorns, you can do this with linked bank accounts, debit cards, and credit cards. Stash has a roundup feature of its own, but you can only do it with linked debit cards. So you can't link a credit card to Stash like you can do in Acorns, at least not at this time. So Acorns Roundup feature is definitely more robust than Stash's. Acorns also has the option for you to assign a Roundup multiplier to your Roundups, meaning that you can set, say, a Roundup multiplier of 10X, and Acorns will take your initial Rounded Up amount, let's say 47 cents, the example I used previously, and it will multiply it by 10 and round up that multiplied amount, so, uh, or and invest that multiplied amount. So in that case, uh, it'd be $4.70, the example I used previously. Stash does not offer round up multipliers. Um, Acorns also offers something called Acorns Earn, which is basically a cash back portal, where if you make a purchase from a retailer from the Acorns Earn uh, section of the Acorns app, you will earn a percentage back of your purchase as a credit to your Acorns investing account. If you want my full thoughts on this, check out my Acorns review. Stash does not offer a similar feature at this time. In terms of banking and a checking account, Checking account comes with Stash's $1 a month plan, while with Acorns, you would have to upgrade to the $3 a month plan. That said, keep in mind that neither Stash nor Acorns is a bank. Acorns has partnered with a bank called Lincoln Savings Bank, and Stash has partnered with Green Dot Bank to offer these banking features. So you're actually opening an account at those financial institutions. These are basic checking accounts. You can receive direct deposit into these accounts. They come with a debit card, and you can use ATM to withdraw cash uh, in both the Acorns and Stash banking features. However, you cannot make deposits at these ATMs uh, at, for either Acorns or Stash. You can't deposit checks at the ATM nor can you deposit cash. You can, of course, deposit checks into both Acorns and Stash if you have their banking system by using mobile deposit, take a picture of your check. Now, one glaring difference between Acorns and Stash is if you use ATMs to take cash out of your account, Acorns ATM network is a lot more robust. Um, 
As mentioned in my Acorns review, Acorns taps into the AllPoint ATM network, which currently has over 55,000 locations nationwide. So you can use the Acorn debit card to get cashed out at any one of those ATMs and not have to worry about paying an out-of-network ATM fee. Stash's debit card ATM network, the network it uses, has only 19,000 fee-free ATMs. So that's just over a third of the number Acorns has. Now, this probably isn't an issue if you live in a major urban area. You'll probably be able to find a Stash networked ATM just as well as you could find an Acorns networked ATM. But if you live in a more rural area or something like that, or you're going to be traveling, uh, and you know, the banking features of these apps are important to you, it may make sense for you to check the map of both Acorns and Stash's in-network ATMs before making your decision. You can find a map of Acorns in-network ATMs by going to allpointnetwork.com slash locator.html, and you can find a map of Stash's in-network ATMs by going to stash.com slash atm-locator. Before we move on from banking, let's talk about rewards uh, on spending on the debit cards. As many of you know, I talk a lot about credit cards in this channel. If you see my recent video on the best credit cards for the year, you know that. Link to that video is at the top of the screen as well as in the description below. If you haven't seen that video yet, um, but you know, it's pretty common to see more and more debit cards also getting into the reward space alongside credit cards. Now, the Acorns debit card doesn't give you a flat percentage back on purchases. It can be used to do roundups real time. It incorporates with Acorns Earn, which is the cash back of particular retailers, right? As well as according to the Acorns website, up to 10% invested in you from le local places you visit every day. I don't have personal experience with the 10% earnings, but my point is that with the Acorns debit card, there's no universal rewards on all spending. It seems to be only at particular retailers. Contrast that with the Stash stock back card, which gives you a percentage of your purchase back in stock. However, as you know, if you've seen my Stash review video, I'm not super thrilled by the rewards offered by the Stash stock back card. The rewards are actually lower than you can get with even a mediocre rewards credit card, not even to mention something like, you know, the, the City Double Cash, right? I've done reviews um, of that card. I've done a review of the Chase Freedom Flex, which is another great card right here on the channel. You can check out links to those reviews in the description below. Now, the Stash Stockback card does give bonus rewards at specific retailers, just like the Acorns debit card, but these seem to be very limited to just a few retailers per month. Stash seems to rotate them on a monthly basis. So although the Stash card does give rewards on all purchases through its Stockback program, the rewards aren't really that great in my opinion. It's really not a huge factor for me here when comparing the bank accounts. That said, keep in mind that to get access to the Acorns spend account, you need to upgrade to the Acorns $3 a month plan, while the Stash banking feature you can get, which is the basic Stash $1 a month plan. All right, let's move on to other account types you can have in Acorns and Stash. So both Acorns and Stash offer traditional and Roth IRAs in their $3 a month plan. So they're equal on those fronts. I'm not going to spend time in this video explaining what these types of accounts are. If you're not sure, check out my video on traditional versus Roth IRAs, link at the top of the screen, as well as in the description below. However, one key difference in terms of the retirement accounts offered is that Acorns, uh, in the $3 a month plan, it allows you to open not only a traditional and Roth IRA, but also a SEP IRA. SEP IRAs are not supported by Stash. What is a SEP IRA? A SEP IRA is a kind of retirement account for business owners and those with self-employment income that allows you to contribute up to a certain percentage of your business income during the year into the SEP IRA. You get a tax deduction for that contribution and it grows tax deferred in the account much like a traditional IRA. Uh, I will likely do a video specifically on SEP IRAs in the future, probably solo 401ks as well. But for purposes of this video, what you need to know is that you can open a SEP IRA with Acorns in the $3 a month plan, but Stash on the other hand does not support SEP IRAs. All right, now we're gonna to touch on uh, the first premium feature that I wanna talk about in this comparison. So Acorns premium plan costs $5 a month, while Stash's costs a whopping $9 a month, okay? First premium feature I wanna talk about are the custodial accounts. These are UTMA or UGMA accounts. UTMA stands for Uniform Transfers to Minors Act. UGMA stands for Universal Gifts to Minors Act. I'm not going to get into the technicalities here, but these are basically investment accounts that you can set up for your kid or your kids. Okay. These are not the only investment accounts you can set up for your kid. You can also set up a 529 plan to save for their education or even a Roth IRA if they have earned income. 
Uh, frankly, I favor the 529 plan over the UGMA or the UTMA. Obviously, I favor the Roth as well. The child does have earned income. So personally, I don't find the premium versions of Acorns and Stash really that worth it. One thing to note is that with Acorns Premium Subscription, you can have an unlimited number of children per family. Uh, they say on their website, multiple kids per family at no added cost per child. But with Stash, the limit is two custodial accounts. Now let's round off the remaining features here. I'm not gonna spend too much time on them, but with both Stash and Acorns Basic Plans, you do get access to very basic financial education, the kind you could find on any reputable personal finance website, right? However, with Stash, you do get premium research. With Stash is uh, the premium $9 a month plan. Uh, this plan, by the way, is called Stash Plus. I don't think I mentioned that before. And this report is called the Stash Plus Monthly Insights Report. They sent it out on the last Friday of each month. I have not seen this. I am not subscribed to Stash Plus, but if anybody has seen this report, I'd love for you to share your thoughts with me and other viewers in the comments below on the Stash Investing Research. Acorns does not have anything similar to Stash's uh, Stash Plus Monthly Insights Report, and that makes sense, right? Because with Acorns, you, don't, you aren't in control of your own investments, right? Apart from choosing one of the five preset portfolios that Acorns uh, can, offers you, can offer you. Finally, one small thing that Stash offers that Acorns doesn't is a small amount of term life insurance along with your subscription plan. So the basic Stash plan offers $1,000 worth of term life insurance, while the premium Stash subscription comes with $10,000 worth of term life insurance. Um, as I mentioned in my Stash review, you must be between the ages of 18 and 54 to be eligible for getting this insurance through Stash. So it's kind of a cool feature, right? But just like I said in the Stash review, if you're young and relatively healthy, you can get a $500,000 policy even a million dollar policy for relatively cheap. So this isn't necessarily a huge boon or advantage, but it is something, right? And finally, both Acorns and Stash have a referral program. These are generally uh, for $5 per person you refer. Sometimes they increase that bonus for certain periods of time throughout the year. Um, all right, so at this point, I have compared the features and benefits of Stash versus Acorns. Uh, but beyond this, there's the whole user experience aspect. And personally, I found the Acorns app a bit easier to use and navigate for the first time than the Stash app. The Acorns app generally follows a one column format, which I find easier to figure out. It's a bit more linear as opposed to Stash, which sometimes utilizes multiple columns, uh, sometimes tabs that have certain information behind the tab. This is probably a matter of personal preference, but I thought I would mention it. All right, now I'm just gonna give some candid thoughts on um, whether I think Stash or Acorns is better for different kinds of folks, okay? Now, first of all, let me just say, if I was just gonna recommend one of these two to a completely newbie investor, I would recommend Acorns dollar a month plan. With Acorns dollar a month plan, you don't have to choose investments. Acorns does it for you based on the risk profile it assigns you based on information you provide to Acorns when setting up your account. All you have to do is just keep putting money into your Acorns account and watching it grow right? From a little acorn to a mighty oak tree, right? Uh, and if you've seen my acorns review, you know that you can do that by rounding up your purchases, by earning cash back using acorns earn, obviously by depositing money into your account um, on either a one-time or recurring basis or both. So you can do that. You can access acorns robo advising, set it and forget it with just their basic dollar a month plan. Now with the basic dollar a month uh, plan for stash, you can't get a preset portfolio. There's no robo advising feature. You basically have to choose your own investments in the Stash app, which can probably feel overwhelming for a newbie, right? Uh, but of course, that may be more attractive to a more experienced investor. But my whole thesis is that these apps are really geared toward newbie investors, or if not newbies necessarily, then those who don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time managing their own investments. And the fact of the matter is at the cheapest subscription plan, right, Acorn seems more appropriate for those purposes. Uh, that said, as I mentioned previously in this video, Stash does give you more control over your investments in that you can select which stocks and ETFs you want to invest in specifically, and you can do this at any subscription tier in the Stash app. But to get a similar robo-advising experience that you get with Acorn's dollar a month plan, you would have to upgrade to Stash's $3 a month plan. Um, and if you are interested in Stash's premium investment research, right, you would have to upgrade to Stash's nine dollar a month plan um, so acorns gives you robo advising for a dollar a month stash makes you upgrade to three dollars a month for robo advising but it's kind of the reverse when it comes to the banking features uh, if you want to have your investment account 
and your banking integrated all in one platform. You can do that with Stash's dollar a month plan, but you'd have to upgrade to Acorn's $3 a month plan if you want to access the banking features in Acorns. That said, if banking is important to you, keep in mind that, like I said, the network that Acorns uses for its ATMs is nearly three times the size of the network Stashes uses for its ATMs. And if you use your debit card at an out-of-network ATM, you could be looking at an ATM fee. In terms of roundups, just to summarize, both Acorns and Stash have roundups, but Acorns roundup feature has more options and integrations than Stashes. When it comes to retirement accounts, both Acorns and Stash offer traditional IRAs and Roth IRAs, but if you want to open a SEP IRA in one of those accounts, you can only do that at Acorns. So if you want to open a SEP IRA, Acorns is probably the one for you. Um, only Stash offers life insurance built in with its subscriptions. One final thing here is that Acorns does have that Acorns Earn Cash Back portal, while with Stash, the rewards more revolve around the Stash Back card. If you want to hear my thoughts on the Stock Back card, check out my Stash review. I spent a good amount of time in that review video digging into that card and all the terms and conditions to see if it's actually a good deal. So as you can see, different strokes for different folks. I think most newbies would probably gravitate toward Acorns, while Stash may appeal to a crowd that's maybe a little bit more interested uh, in learning about investing for themselves. So I can't tell you which one is right for you, Stash or Acorns, uh, but hopefully you can look at these charts in this video, compare the two, and make your decision. I really hope this video uh, has provided you with the information you need to make that determination. If you choose to download, uh, download either one of these apps, I'd love it if you use my links below to support the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, and like I said, if you want a deeper dive into the Acorns app, be sure to check out my complete walkthrough and tutorial of the Acorns app, which is right over here. And if you want to see me do the same for Stash, check out my Stash review and, tuto and, and tutorial right down here. And I will see you in those videos.